Over a year ago, I started on a survival world with a bunch of my friends, but now with Minecraft 1.20 finally here, it's time to start a brand new world. This time, we've specially picked a world seed that brings with it some of the most beautiful generated terrain perfect for 1.20. So, let's get this episode started. And we're in! Jumping down from this cherry tree at spawn, I quickly get started. First, I begin by getting together some super basic resources such as wood, cobblestone and iron, and then gear up to enable us to get building. From there, I suit up and start exploring the world. For this season, I want to focus much more on organic and natural style builds, so try something new and go for some more peaceful vibes. Typically, I tend to gravitate very much towards building cities due to my love of them, so this time I want to mix things up and challenge myself creatively. During my exploration, I find a nearby jungle and begin collecting some jungle tree saplings and cocoa pods, then I proceed onwards on a hunt for bamboo. Not long after, I find some growing and promptly start harvesting an initial stash so as to make use of all the new bamboo block types added into the game. From there, I move on to find possibly the smallest mangrove swamp biome that I've ever seen in a world, but it has what I came for and I made sure to collect some of the mangrove propagules so as to start farming the trees myself. On my way back to the area near spawn, I quickly stopped by to annoy one of my friends on the server who was busy constructing his starter house. I then continued onwards on my way. Rather ironically, after exploring thousands of blocks in the distance in this new world, I ended up assigned to set up my new base only a short distance away from spawn. I found this incredible looking gorge with the mountains right behind it. If this isn't an inspiring location to build at, then I really don't know what is. And with my base location now decided, I quickly started getting together some basic infrastructure, all set up ready for our first builds. Midway through, I stopped for a very quick trade with Warrior Mouse, who popped by as he needed a whole load of deep slate for one of his latest projects. Next up on my to-do list is an iron farm to provide for all of my iron needs, so then I cracked on and started building up this farm based off of a really simple and easy to build design from ENX04. I left a link down below to his video, so make sure you go check it out. Once I finished building up the farm itself, I needed to do some zombie hunting and get one to follow me, pick up an item to prevent it despawning, and then get it to walk into the holding chamber. My first attempt, however, did not go as planned, the zombie refused to pick up the item. My second attempt was much more successful and picked up the item as planned. And with the zombie now in place, I moved on to the final stage of the farm and started loading it up with some villagers. I successfully got two in place and sleeping in their beds, but the third completely refused to sleep. And after getting mildly frustrated, I broke and finally replaced the bed, which then did the trick. And with that, the farm then kicked into life, task complete. With some basic infrastructure now set up, I geared up for my first build, and with this big gourd right by me, I decided that a bridge would be a perfect first choice to make a proper link from the mountains to the savannah opposite. This will really help tie up different parts of my base in the future. For the bridge I'm building today, I took some heavy inspiration from a design by Louis de Puy and adapted it to something that would fit perfectly to what I had envisioned. Finally ready to go, I cracked on and started building. Fair to say I'm pretty chuffed with how the bridge turned out and it's definitely in keeping with the more natural style that I had wanted to follow and it will certainly fit in nicely with my future plans. It's already got me very inspired to perhaps start building some buildings or walkways into the gorge itself. Anyhow, now that we can cross over the gorge to the nearby savannah, I wasted no time and started scouting out an area ready for my second build of the day. And that is a small starter hut that will allow us to clear out my little temp starter area as I currently have all my storage sprawling out everywhere. For this build, I decided to intentionally keep it quite small and cosy and make it to incorporate all of the new bamboo blocks that have been added to the game to make the hut feel quite unique. I had a lot of fun coming up with this design and I had even more fun bringing the whole area to life so let me know down in the comments what you think. After I finished the exterior of our build I started focusing on the pathways outside of the front of the hut and as I don't really have any mud based blocks yet I then tried to mix things up as best as I could with a combination of the path blocks and some coarse dirt which I think did the trick. Then I started detailing some more and made use of one of my favourite new additions to the game in 1.20 and that is the decorated pots. 
The best part about them is that you can actually stick lanterns on top of them for a cool outdoor lamp or you can even add plant pots for an even more unique pop of detail. I did also try making use of some of the moss blocks but as I quickly found out it didn't look great as I forgot how much the grass colour contrasted here in the savannah to the colour of moss. So instead I carried on and started adding in some berry bushes and then finally started mixing in some granite into the path. And with everything done outside, I then moved on into the interior. Now I do have to come clean and say that interiors are not my strong suit. So I did do all the decorating off camera and after initially being a little bit stuck, I did finally get into a bit of a flow and I was quite happy with the outcome. In particular, I really liked how this fireplace came out, but let me know what you think. Upstairs then, I added this small storage area for all our storage needs. And then finally outside, I added this little veranda with a seating area and a small table. Overall, I'm very happy with all the progress we've made so far. With my small starter hut now complete, I turned my attention back across the bridge to our nether portal and decided to give it and the area around it a little makeover. So I tore down the current portal and started building a new one that would blend into the hillside landscape itself and transform the area in the process. I decided on a heavy blend of all the stone and mossy stone variants blocks and then I mixed in a smattering of the tough blocks to break up the texture a bit more and to give it a bit more of an aged ruined look. Having got into a bit of a flow I decided to add a small winding stream that fed from the hillside to snake its way down into the gorge. Again I made use of a mix of the cobblestone blocks for the stream bed and banks. I did take some inspiration from one of my fellow server members Mr Daffy Duck who in the last season built this really cool underground cocoa farm that did something very similar. It felt really good just to get stuck in and adjust this stream as I went along without too much advice planning. And with that, I completed the first part of my brand new base. I really am super chuffed with what we've done and built today, but let me know what you think and leave a comment with any suggestions on what you think we could do and build next time. But for now, all I have left to say is that I really hope you enjoyed this episode, and if you did, then make sure you hit that like button and subscribe for more. But until next time, I will see you later. Bye bye.